Lumineers, welcome to the Lighter Side Show. I'm your host today, Jamie Butler, but I will not be staying here long. Today is going to be Grace, so I will be trans-channeling Grace to deliver a message to you, and she's going to talk about global warming or climate change. Use whichever term resonates with you. Now, you can probably see I'm tearing up a little bit. That's not going to stop for some reason. There are so many spirits in the room, my heart just feels very big and I know I'm not speaking loud and I'm trying to speak loud and I'm sure you empathic lumineers kind of come across the same feeling where you feel heightened sense of awareness and you're trying to be human through that experience and it's a it's a hard kind of seesaw to balance but here we go housekeeping notes before we get into this journey we have Luma Summit coming in October that's here in Atlanta the weekend of the 13th we're going to have about 15 to 18 presenters, channelings, gatherings, and a bunch of special things that I'm not going to share because I want you to experience it as a surprise. Because you little clairvoyants out there and empath people, you don't get a lot of surprises, do you? That's what premonitions do. They just ruin those surprises. Not a lot of mystery, but I want to see if I can provide that for you. So come to Luma Summit and we will have these magical little awakenings. For anything Jamie Butler workshop classes and lectures, head over to my website, jamiebutlermedium.com. And for you guys that don't like to surf the social media wave, sign up for the newsletter. That comes to you once a month, tells you everything that's going on in this world over here at Love and Light, so you don't have to keep checking on social media. But if you love social media, we are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, here we are on Vimeo and YouTube. Okay, settle in, get ready, here we go. Maybe I'll, I'll stop processing all this energy with this weeping feeling. My grandfather is in the room today in spirit, and so I'm um, kind of excited because where I'm going to go is probably off with him while you enjoy grace. All right, take care, Lumineers. If you're sensitive, you'll probably feel a shift. Even if you're just listening to audio or watching, you'll feel a shift, but I promise everybody's going to stay in their body. Just take a deep breath with me. Hello, Lumineers. It is very nice to have you here. Welcome to Graceful Insights. I feel like it's been so long since I've been with you. Here I am working with a very tired body. I've spoken with Jamie this morning before coming into the studio about fasting and not eating so that maybe we can maintain some level of energy because she has been under the weather and I do hear it in my ears it's like I have another way of listening inside of my head here so I sympathize with those who are having your head colds and flus please know keep up and maintain a very healthy breathing exercise so that you can disperse the stuck energy with the head cold and chest cold. Good. We have Colleen in the back of the room and we have Jesse behind the cameras. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> and we have you on the other side of the lens. Today I'd like to talk about your climate change and how this is affecting your energy. Not a lot of material is out there about how is it affecting the energetic field of the person. I do feel like it's a topic we need to discuss. And I know that Maitland is getting a live Facebook after this. So I will propose that next time we do our channelings, that I will do the live Facebook and maybe we can field more questions about climate change. 
Wonderful. So this will be a part one where we are going to look at how the earth is shaking and moving and changing her vibrations. In part two, you and I will discuss what exactly we can do energetically to make sure that you are rising to the occasion and helping these shifts. Climate change is real. It is what your earth does and does well. But what is happening in your day and age is jump-started, is put on a fast track by humans. We like to think that we are very progressive and that we are forward thinkers and inventors, which is all very well and good. I believe in every century that humans have been on the earth, they would like to find to define themselves that way. But when you look back in history and we approach the industrial age, you start to find the one thing that we're leaving behind is the care of the earth. Now all of a sudden, everybody is becoming a master in one type of career. When you look back through the ages, we were all farmers, we were all bakers, we were all cooks, we were all doctors, healers, and then we had some kind of profession or job that we gave to the whole. Nowadays, when we look at individuals, they are not the farmers, they are not the bakers, the cooks, they are not the doctors not to the degree that they used to be. And with that, lost this understanding of how to take care of your environment. Because we're not passing down the stories of how to care for the soil, and not passing down the stories of ratio qualities of building per acreage of nature that we are now compacting too much, let's say, humanhood onto the earth at one time and not looking at what we're leaving behind. Of course, I'm sure, Lumineers, that you have gone down the beautiful national forest paths and seen signs that say, only leave your footprints behind. I'm sure that's exactly what you did. But were you also aware of what kind of footprints that you're leaving in your home, in your neighborhood, in your city, and not just in the national forest? Now this goes above and beyond not putting trash down. It goes into a set of mind thinking of what are you creating? You have your body, you're creating your thoughts, you have your livelihood, your home, but where's your energy coming from? How is it working? Where's your trash going? What kind of impact are you creating with your cars, with your equipment, with your businesses? Because as of now in this industrial age, we've never been held to a degree of acknowledgement of the footprints in the whole. And I hope I haven't lost you, but there hasn't been a language and going beyond what your Al Gore has started with even being the face of climate change and your Leonardo DiCaprio's and all of these Robert Swans and saving the world, we're talking about what you're doing at home there hasn't been some kind of reinforcement law, need or design that says we need to sit down as a family and talk about what kind of CO emissions and what kind of gases that we're using and what kind of trashes are we making or what kind of choices are we making with the purchases of cars, homes, material, food, packaging. Who are we choosing to be? What I will commend you 
is that there is a lot of conversation going on right now about the quality of food. And my Lumini is, this is just the beginning. We're looking at food that doesn't have chemicals in it, that doesn't have hormones in it, and we're looking at the wholeness and the healthiness of where the food is coming from. So now we are finally back to looking at our farmers. We are starting to honor them. You're starting conversations about how do we help preserve that land for them? How do we help them have the clean water? And how do we encourage them to set law on fertilizers and chemicals that go into the land. So there is a shift of purchase power, which is marketing power. You are asking now for food that is clean. And with that will come the next conversation. How is my food delivered? How is it packaged? So with chemicals, with plastics being made, and all of these elements around you and in your home, not only is it impacting your physical body, it's impacting your energetic body. What's interesting is in your energetic field, there are not many mouths that can yell out to you and speak to you if something is vibrating at a level that's not feeling good or providing optimum vibration to create the health, balance, the wellness that you are seeking. But what you do have is a very big range of emotion. And I have spoken to you before, Lumineers, about paying great attention to what your emotions are saying to you and what you are feeling instinctively on the inside. Because what your culture is saying to you and providing to you in this day and age is not necessarily resonating with you, is not harmonizing with your energy, so it creates a sense of being out of place, it creates a sense of uncomfortable, it creates a distance that maybe you can't exactly put words to, but that you don't know how to bridge and these emotions, these signs are extremely important to you, Lumineers, for you to be able to navigate your position. I'm speaking very small and to you and your choices because this is the first place to begin when discussing climate change. The way you use your power, your electricity, the way you use your instincts, your gut reactions, the way you acknowledge how you feel, will then show up in the choices that you make. And as a result, you will take better care of yourself, of your family, of your home, of your air, of your earth, and you will not be experiencing this shift of emissions in the air, the cooling and heating that is extremely out of place for Mother Earth, the dying off of species that don't need to leave this world. And I dare say I have a warning for the people. When we look at China, when we look at parts of India with such high populations in small areas that the ratios of dwelling to nature have so extremely been eradicated that the pollution levels are so high that they are having trouble breathing. They are choking themselves out. The changes that can be made start with you. They start with, are you feeling comfortable doing what you're doing? 
I could even say, are you proud of what you're doing? Are you proud of the large vehicle that you drive that consumes so much gas and puts out so much emissions? And if you're not proud of it, I'm going to ask, what is standing between you and making a change? Because if you're looking for a large vehicle that is now what you say hybrid or fully electric so there are no emissions and one does not exist, then what is stopping you from asking for one to be designed? Where is your pen to paper? Where is your finger to keyboards? Finding others that are innovative and that are out there which have solutions and demanding that they make it available for all levels and all classes to be able to purchase and use. Where's your spiritual activism, as Dushna likes to say about herself? You must know why you hold yourself back. And if it's convenience, I like to say to you that your convenience has a big impact on the world. And most of you haven't even looked at the option of convenience by including another family, by including another purchasing power where several people can share in the purchase of gallons of yogurt without single serving plastic cups. So that all of a sudden the marketing purchase power is pulling away from single serves and looking at selling in bulk. So the production of plastic decreases and the factories don't produce a lot or more. So there's less emissions in the air. For every story, I can tell you a domino effect and I can always tell you the first domino because it's you. Now a lot of you may have heard in your political environments, people who are in charge, that there is no climate change, that there is no global warming. What is interesting is I wish that global warming was discussed more because it's not so much the warming that you'll be experiencing. You'll be experiencing very cold climates in places where it once was very warm and vice versa. But overall, the temperatures in an average are increasing. There is a 1.5% increase that you have left and once you reach that increase from the choices of how you're living, the earth may not be able to return back to her homeostasis. Now this is not so much a, a warning, more than a fact. There are tipping points in everything that you choose. I like the idea that a lot of you are looking at no wars and on your birthday wishes and in your prayers and intents you're asking for world peace. But might I say, I do believe for many centuries you have been asking for it. But let's start asking for the ways that create peace. Let's start asking for better communication. So the next time you're blowing out your candles on your cake, you ask for leaders to communicate better. You ask for your government to have more words. Because with better communication, we'll begin to identify what humanity really needs. And maybe right now it's not about having peace but creating more disturbances so that you can see where the needs really lie. Creating spotlights 
to highlight the wounds of the world so that we can then begin to heal them. And climate change is one of them. If we have better communication, we can then begin to help other countries and ourselves with organic forms of electricity, with a better system in food exchange, with better regulations in home care, in business care, automobile care, so that we don't have to see our earth choose what she will do at a tipping point. Now my empathic friends, I know that you've been feeling that something large is coming, but you might not be able to explain what it is. There's not a war that is coming. It is a need. A need for better care of the earth. And I hope that provides you with some peace. The internet, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, are all places to start communications. What kind of changes are you making? Are you choosing to reuse? Are you choosing to recycle? What are you throwing away? What cars are you driving? Where are you buying your food? Which oil industries own the food companies that you're buying your food from? I believe many people do not know where their product really comes from and who is benefiting from it. A lot of the governments of the world, and this is not new news, is in control of oil, coal, gases. They're in control of what they consider to be the power that helps rule and run humanity. But they are mistaken. They are not in control over the wind. They are not in control over the sun. And these are two beautiful options of how to get your electricity. Maitland, I believe, for the last decade, before every public channeling, has been sharing what urban camping can do for everyone. And that is extremely important to know how to live within your own home, in your neighborhood, in your city, your own apartment, your own condo, while there is no supplied power from anywhere else. How could you survive for a week with no electricity and no water? What would it look like? And it's not to prepare for a world of war and damage and destruction, but it's to prepare you to come off the grid. It's to challenge you to have the know-how to be sustainable. But sustainable is not where we're going to stop. As our good friend Peter Lombardi says, it's thrivable is where we are going. And with thrivable, we change climate change. We shift it. Because with thrivable, not only are you generating the water from dew in the air, enough for yourself, enough for your community, but enough to share with the neighboring community. It's time to pull away from sustainability. Sustainability has the definition of just taking care of myself. As long as I'm cared for, well, then I can provide care for others. But what if you adapted thriveability? Where yes, you yourself had enough, but then your hands were still full 
for you to give to others. Harnessing power from sun, power from wind, while you live in the middle of your city. Gaining enough of that electricity and power to give back to your community and in many cases be paid for it by the city. Making money. I warn you, Lumineers, listen to your heart, listen to your emotions, listen to your degree of comfortable. Are you uncomfortable with how things are being presented to you? Is there are many masks when it comes to global warming and many people telling you it does not exist when it does. And then many people telling you that only oil and only coal is the way to go. Your investments, Lumineer, need to be made in a thrivable way. And coal and oil is not thrivable. These are resources that can leave and never return. But our wind will never let you down and our sun will never let you down. So this chat today wasn't so much about the details of all what is happening, but a reminder and an encouragement that it starts with you. You are always going to be the first domino. And if you are passing it along to somebody else, because of some excuse that you are sharing with yourself or some excuse that you choose to believe in. I want to challenge you and in a very loving way. Why do you feel you are not strong enough? Why do you feel you cannot achieve these things? Because invented or not, you have a voice. And this is the best time to use it. My lumineers, my little lumineers, take a deep breath, breathe in through the nose and out through your mouth. Smell the quality of your air, feel the strength in your body, the gratefulness of where you are, of who you are. And most of all, lumineers, Grateful for the power of change that you have. Dig deep into your communities. Ask for help. When you make allies with others and you communicate well of what your needs are, your inconveniences become convenient. Build what you need. Let's choose not to follow anymore. With all my heart, I love you. And when you need me, and when you need support, call on me. Like the wind and like the sun, I will not let you down. We are in this together. Godspeed. Leave the cameras on for a second. Put your feet on the ground, get comfortable in your chair. Enjoy this feeling of love.